Okay, so my name is Munakata from Japan this time, and thank you for inviting me to this conference. I'm a bit surprised to see the many people attending this conference. So today I will talk about uh, the kernels, the Linux kernels, and also the focus on the, the kernel versions. So the title is uh, yet another long-term stable kernels. So we are having a project named LTSI. So this, today I will talk about LTSI stuff. Okay, this is the agenda, and uh, initially I want to introduce myself. So, I come from the company Lunesas, the making the SOC, but uh, today I uh, represent the uh, Linux Foundation activity because I'm a member of the Linux Foundation, and uh, I'm a member of uh, CE. CE stands for the Consumer Electronics the Working Group, and also work with the uh, LTSI project because a guy named Shibata-san, Venezi, and myself is working together to make the LTSI almost one hour ago. So today, I'm uh, the in charge of the Linux Foundation role, okay? So, first I want some question for you guys. So, you have, you, maybe the most of you have already used Linux, and uh, of course it's included in the kernels. So, how did you decide the kernel versions? So, because uh, there's three types of the answers. So, number one and the number two is, uh, I don't care, because, so it's a part of the distribution because if you download the Ubuntu and Debian, of course it comes with the kernels. Or you are using some kind of application platform like Android. So Android, the each version, including any search kernel inside. So you don't need to care about the kernels because it automatically comes with uh, such kind of distributions. And the type two answer is uh, no option, no way. That means, uh, especially in the embedded space, because I'm from the embedded guy, so. If you want to learn the Linux on ARM and other whatever, the embedded architectures, you may given the Linux PSP from the, the silicon vendors. So in such case, uh, silicon vendors may decide the version. So you have no option. So you need to use that without any choice. And the number three is, uh, yes, I have uh, intentionally selected versions. So there are even the, this category three, there are two types of uh, option. One is the I want to use previously proven the old one. And this is a typical answer, especially from the industry, guys. Because uh, industry people spend a huge effort to stabilize their kernels for their product. So they don't want to change that. And uh, last option, number five, is uh, yes, I prefer the today latest stuff. Especially for, like me, so the, some developer people and also the amateur and some kind of research people want to use the latest stuff because of that it may include the more latest modern stuff inside. But today I'm talking mostly focus on the industries. So I ask a question. So how many of you guys from the, 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 the university and the research facilities? How many guys of you guys from the industry that are making product, actual product? Okay. So today's my talk is mostly focused on the industry viewpoint because the industry guy must uh, achieve the actual production within some due date. So they don't want to be too much aggressive to choosing kernels. So in most cases, number four, the using the well, the verified kernels. So my question, next question is, uh, the old kernel is a good or not? So here's my answer. So the vintage kernel, Oh, no, something happened. Vintage car is not always matured, as it is not the wine. I can think <laughs> some of the pop-up message blocks. Okay, so the, most of the industry people think old one is better, <laughs> new one is dangerous. But this is not true because uh, the software, the lifetime, because uh, nowadays most of the product need to be connected to the internet. And the most of the user want to install the new application, new gaming stuff, new application. So all the software, the foundations of the operating system need to be maintained to apply the latest bug fixes, latest security fixes. So that means uh, all the software must be maintained during its lifetime. It means uh, if the maintenance is stopped, its software is already dead. So some old kind of like a 2.4 kernel, some people still using for that, but there are no update come with the 2.4. And later the Linux 2.6 is moving to the 3.0 already. So the question is how the Linux car is maintained for its for during the whole lifetime. So these are pictures. So this example shows uh, 
on the left one is uh, the, the 2629 uh, kernels is keep it maintained. Maintain means uh, apply the bug fix patches, security fix patches, till the 3.1 comes out. It means the uh, two life, life cycles. So currently the Linux kernel migrate roughly every 80 days. So the maintenance lasts only 150 days. After that, the maintenance will be discontinued. It means uh, you will not given any update for that kernels. So this is problematic because you are not using the always the latest kernels. Sometimes you may need some old one. So of course this is not only for the embedded space, or it's also for the enterprise guy like uh, Red Hat and Suze using the facing the exact same problem. Then they discuss with the community to make the LTS. LTS stands for the long term stables. So, so this selected version, LTS version, maintenance will be keep continued over the times. So the, the, this, this is completely different. So LTS kernels and other kernels are completely different lifetime maintenance periods. Initially, you should aware of this. So if you choose a kernels, you need to notice is this a LTS version or non-LTS version. This is a very important question for you. Okay. So next page shows a. Uh, so what I saw here, so regular kernel lasts only 80 days for the maintenance, and LTS lasts, this is not a special rule previously, that it lasts for over the years, maybe two or five years. So the choosing the LTS button is very essential stuff. Okay, the next one. So, so for how the community and industry decide the LTS buttons? So previously there are no official rules to choosing the LTS. So previously, sometimes Red Hat and Suzy discuss and request community to choose some versions. So here are some listed LTS versions, so 2616, 2627, 2632, 34, and 35 is the current LTS, long-term stable target. So, but this is a, not convenient for us to, to understand which is the next LTS versions. So if you see the, some website, so. So if I visit, so this is the website. So this is this side, this is the, the master, the repository of the Linux kernels. And here you can see many versions. The up right side, you can see the, the today's latest stable kernel is a 3.5.2. This is a today's available latest kernels. And other than you can see some others, so from the left downside. So the under development kernel main line is a 3.6 RC2. This is under developing stuff. And the stable, the 3.52. And some, oh, but because you can see some 3.3.5, it's end of life. This is a, we'll con discontinue the maintenance sometime soon. And some of the other versions, like you can see 2627, 32, 34, 35, and uh, 3.0 is a current long term stable target. So if you're choosing the, this specific long term stable versions, so you will keep maintained. But, okay. I don't know how to use this. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I need to type something. <laughs> Okay. Back to the slide and uh, okay, there are some new rules to select the LTS button because uh, the guy named uh, Greco Hartman, he's a uh, community guy, he's a kind of Linux kind of number two, number one is Linux and number two is currently the Greg is uh, doing a lot of work in the community. And he's a maintainer of the Linux long-term server code. And he set the new rules to work with, uh, especially for the embedded peoples. So he set the new rules as uh, pick one version per year, like uh, Linux kernel 2011, 2012, 2013, and keep, he has committed to keep it maintained over two years. As previously mentioned, the normal kernel lasts only 150 days or something. 
but the LTS version is committed to pick one per year and the com the connect con continue maintenance for over the two years lifetime. So this is a brand new rule defined last year. So this is a seems uh, LTS selection should be a good idea. However, the most of you may have a uh, not fully satisfied with the LTS because the, the I mentioned the, the today's latest long term stable version is 3.0. And you may want to use that, your product. But you may need to add some new device driver support, new platform support, and you may want to use uh, some new features, like uh, already adopting the latest kernel. Because uh, 3.0 is uh, almost two years old kernels. Uh, no, no, roughly, roughly one year old kernels. So there's no way to add a new feature on that. So we are, I want to fix that problems Because uh, I want to use the latest device, latest device driver, latest uh, platform for your product. So this kind of the, the timing gap issue is uh, our target to tackle. OK, so that's why we made the LTSI. So the, what's the main difference in the LTS and LTSI? So LTS is uh, the community code, and LTSI is not a community code. So LTSI can accept these three red colors of stuff. One is uh, features. So some new future, because uh, I'm working with uh, the community to add a new the power management scheme, the new security framework, new the resource control stuff. So many new advanced technologies applied in the latest code. So I want to use that on the stable kernels. This is the future stuff. And the second one, the device driver. So you may want to use the latest Wi-Fi chips, latest graphics chips on your product. So that device is maybe supporting the latest kernel, but not available in the the stable code, so this kind of driver you want to use. And the third one is uh, the most problematic portion because uh, I know that each company is spending huge effort to stabilize your product. And during that the validation process, so you may find uh, the fixing bugs and you keep it in the in-house because there's no chance to send back because it's the kind of is already done. So they, there are maybe three major stuff, futures, drivers, and the local patches. So I want to add them on top of the LTS kernel to create the LTSI. This is a concept of LTSI. So the LTSI is a LTS the plus industry demanded code. So this is basically industry code, not the community code. And governed by the Linux Foundation, it means uh, the regular kernel development is uh, controlled by the community. The Linux has full controls of making the new version, the new the create, the specified uh, specification, and uh, the delivery date is uh, fully controlled by the Linux. But uh, this LTSI is governed by Linux Foundation. This is an uh, industry community collaboration, uh, some kind of the foundation. So we can control the, the specification and the delivery date from the LTSI. And suddenly, the focus on colors. Of course, you need the the user land and the tool chain and the, to make the actual product. But uh, in this project, we only focus on kernels. That means uh, you can use LTSI kernel with whatever project you are doing. For example, the Android can use LTSI, and the Debian can use, currently, of course, they are not using LTSI, but we are now start talking with them to work with LTSI. And the first one is uh, the CPU architecture neutral. So this is not specific focus on the ARM, on the, some the specific the embedded device. So Intel x86 and all the other architecture can use LTSI as base code. So this is just a seed, but uh, pretty much the universal stuff to work with any kind of stuff. And uh, the, let's, the compressor is rules, because uh, this is not the community activities, but we want to utilize, reuse the already proven the community the different process, like uh, and using a git trees and using the some the signed off by process and then this kind of code consolidation process so we want to utilize the already proven the community styles but at the same time we want to be more flexible because the uh, industry people is not uh, free to comply with the uh, open source rules because open source is a uh, combining many many different country different company people so we have a strict rule to work with but each company may have their own kind of in-house manner to control the code. So we want to be slightly flexible to accept such kind of stuff because to lower the, the barrier to get into the, this kind of activities. Okay, this figure shows uh, who can do what for the LTSI because uh, LTSI is a complete open source 
and uh, anyone can download that, and uh, anyone can send an email to that. But there is right, uh, the blue line is the ICM. ICM stands for the industry contact meetings. So it means, uh, as mentioned, the LTSI is a industry-focused code, and uh, any industry guy can join the LTSI project to send the, your request and your expectations and your proposal to the LTSI in the future LTSI release. So to send this kind of code, you want me the the Linux Foundation, the CE Working Group, the corporate members, because the uh, Linux Foundation is a very big the, the consortium to inviting the many industry guys and also with the community guys. Currently, the Linux and the Greg is uh, the funded by the Linux Foundation. So any company can join the Linux Foundation and they can be the member of the CE Working Group. So if you can become the such, kind of such members, you can send the uh, join the ICM, the industry contact meeting and you can send your request to this. So this is the kind of the, the categorization of the membership. But anyway, anyone can use that, anyone can download this. So the next picture shows uh, how, what kind of code can be integrated to LTSI. So because uh, LTSI is an intentionally expanded code from the community LTS code. So there are some rules. The number one is uh, from upstream. So the one is an exception doing the automatic. That means the LT community will keep the applying the, the security fix, the bug fix automatically. That declared by the Greg, he's uh, applying the incrementary, the, some of the fixing code. So this kind of fix code is automatically applied to the LTSI as well. But other than that, like uh, the new features, the new driver stuff, and some new code is still in the queues need to be requested to apply on LTSI. So if you notice that this is a very good code already available in the latest code, you, send a, you need to send a request or you need to send a purchase to request to add this code into the LTSI. So this kind of process is needed. And also the associate vendors like Nessus, TI, Freescale, Qualcomm need to send uh, their code because of most of the associate vendor company has a, their own tree in-house because they, don't, they have no chance to send all code into the community, so they need to keep their in-house code. This is not a good thing, because they need to spend a huge effort to keep in the in-house maintenance. But, so it, they can send such kind of the in-house code to the community, and it's as well as for the LTSI. So we are now talking to many SOC vendors uh, to send us this kind of code, and they are doing that now. And uh, this is from the SOC vendors. And uh, the next one is uh, the product vendor. The so product vendor may have their own testing result, their own patches. So this kind of stuff also can be applied to LTSI. So these kind of the various source can be integrated to LTSI. So this picture, this is a bit big, busy picture, but this uh, picture roughly shows uh, how the, the community and the LTSI works. So the upper green part is a community activity. Community is a incremental release of new colors, and the ones so in the middle one is uh, decided as a LTS candidate. So we will start uh, creating LTSI. The bottom, the, the brown color part is uh, LTSI activities. So we will start uh, collecting patches to create the LTSI. So this is uh, briefly introducing the relationship with LTS and LTSI. Okay, so also we need to spend some kind of validation because uh, LTSI is uh, not a professional code because uh, we are not selling the LTSI. This is an open source code, but we want to do the, some the validation process. So we now start talking with uh, uh, like other Linux Foundation project like Yocto and others so, to discuss how we can test the LTSI code. So this kind of discussion now happening. And once the LTSI cards are made, so how you can use that? Because uh, anyone can download the code and uh, uh, this uh, early stage uh, industry people send the patches to the LTSI, and once the LTSI released, so it will keep maintained with a reflection of the LTSI, the bug fix application. So you can download the latest LTSI code to make your product, and uh, on top of that, so we add uh, keep the staging tree open to collect an additional patch set. So you can cherry pick the, also from the staging tree to make your own the your own kernels. So this is a way to use a Linux uh, LTSI code. So the next picture shows uh, 
how the, the open source email transaction happens. The, the, during the April to the May timing, it was uh, the patch correction process for the LTS 3.0. So we have some activities. And after that, June, July, we spent the validation. Some people send the testing report. And the, the finally, so the LTS 3.0 looks like this. It's a too much. So the roughly, so this is summary. So LTS 3.0 is uh, adding the 800 extra patch code. Is that includes uh, Android code from 3.3 and uh, some LTT entity from 3.2 and the PRAM FS from 3. Point something and the runtime PM also the given from the 3.3 and 3.4 and some additional the platform support. So we have added actually the the Renesas have added three the new platform the LTSI. So this kind of thing already happened in 3.0. So this is a the brief the history of the LTSI. So the LTS 3.0 was released the end of July. So this is available to download now. And we are also ready to start the next one. So today's most important information for you is uh, the next LTS is a 3.4 basis. So because uh, 3.4 is released uh, May this year, and the LTSI, the patch correction process will start sometime September, sometime soon. And uh, that I'm targeting the release code uh, sometime in November, early November timing. So this is a brief timeline for the next activities. So this figure shows that. And uh, 3.4 was released in May the 20th this year. And uh, it will be changing to the long-term stable mode sometime around uh, October. So uh, roughly the one month later, the so November timing. So I'm trying to release LTSI 3.4. This can be the Linux kernel 2012 that we committed to maintain two years length. So if you want to start some new product design. So you should use a 3.4. This is a, a committed long-term stables, and you have a chance to send the code against the LTSI 3.4. So this is the most important information for you today. And if you have any interest, so please contact me or the Linux Foundation. So this is a currently happening now. OK, this is the resources. So there are some, the Git tree, and also mailing list, and also some the Twitter stuff to the penetrate the information about the LTSI. And uh, OK, this is the conclusion. So the Linux Foundation just launched the LTSI project. And uh, the developer and distribute the specify enhanced LTS kernel, so named LTSI, for the embedded industry use. So this is uh, currently focused on embedded. But of course, other come to the industry like uh, um, the heavy industry, the automotive industry are very interested about the using LTSI. So we are not so specific focused on some specific target. So the rough, briefly, the emitted market. And uh, we welcome the SOC vendor and the product vendor to make this happen. And uh, I believe the LTSI can reduce to your effort to your in-house maintenance. Because currently, the, the kernel in-house maintenance is a big burden for you. So I believe the LTSI can reduce such kind of effort. and. Uh, you can reduce your cost as well. And uh, 3.0 have released the end of July. It's already available now. And the next one, 3.4, is uh, our next candidate. And the staging tree will open sometime soon. And the 3.4 release candidate is in November this year. So if you start a new stuff, so you should focus on 3.4 now. OK, this is the last page. So the call for action for the 3.4. The one is the uh, SOC vendors and the core providers. So if you have any patches, so please send it to the LTSI. Because uh, the, during the September, October time frame, we will open the LTSI staging tree. So that's the place you can send the call to reflect the LTSI 3.4. And uh, we are now thinking about uh, how we can improve the test capability. So we are now start discussing with uh, many type of people, like uh, the Yocto project and uh, Linaro and some other organization. So if you have any special idea, so please inform us. And the product vendor, so please consider to choose LTSI as a next candidate. And uh, if you have any good in-house code. So I believe the most of the industry guys are working very hard to make your uh, fixing code. So if you have a good one, that should be applied to the mainline code. So please send it now. Because uh, I have no time to, to, to much talk about the mainline process, but the LTSI has a, another aspect to collect your patch set and send it to the latest upstream. Because uh, Greg is a maintainer, uh, the latest uh, project maintainer. He can help us to send your code to the, also for the upstream. So this is the way to reflect your code. And the distributor and integrator, because uh, we have already talking to 
the Monta Vista Wind River, the Menta Graphics, many companies to help the LTSI as a distribution. So if you have any special intention to study and evaluate the LTSI, please inform me and I will help you to how, can, how to use that. Okay, so today I introduce LTSI stuff. So I only have two, three minutes. <laughs> if any questions? Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I want to ask. Like Ubuntu support a long-term version for two years, and LSI, LTSI is not support for one year. What's the difference between them? Uh, yes, yeah. LTSI is uh, committed to support uh, two years from its beginning. So 3.4 is released in the May uh, this year. So it will keep continue the, the 2014 the May. It's last two years from its beginning, and LTSI sync with that. So it is we last also for the two years from the beginning. Okay. Uh, I would like to ask if there's uh, if you are aware of any other projects that uh, maintains long-term support for the associated tool chains, because it is known that in embedded de developments, um, the tool chain is in fact also very crit as in very important as compared to the kernel. So uh, from it, I. What I know is that uh, for each vendor, they maintain their own tool chains as well. So I was wondering if there is any effort to standardize on that. Thank you. Yeah, that's a very good point. Because as mentioned, uh, LTS says only focus on kernels. And uh, the kernel does not so deep the uh, dependency of the, the tool chain. But each user and application have a strict relationship to the, the tool chains. And uh, of course, uh, the good news is to maintain the tool chains. And, uh, it depends on some architecture, but if you focus on ARM, so the later the, the Linaro is the start to maintain the, the generic the ARM tool chains. And uh, of course, other architectures, uh, each GNU team is making that. And uh, LTSI have no special dependency to the tool chain, and uh, I have no special idea and understanding about uh, how they make the tool chain by themselves. But we can co combine with any type of the stuff. Thank you. 呃，我们在最后一个问题好了，剩下一分钟好，那那边。呃呃呃 ，I've heard uh about uh the Russell King who is a uh ARM Linux develop my main developer. He has said that uh, he think the most of code from SOC vendor will uh generate lots of warning for compile time, and uh, he has that. And uh, in uh, this long term system, it, uh. Uh, we see the SOC based have to submit their patch and the, the commu community will validate their code. Uh, is, it, is this uh, system will reduce the warning from SOC vendors driver or other patches? I believe so because uh, if you, your SOC vendor does not notice it, it's a pretty informed this because uh, currently each SOC vendor like a TI, FreeScale, Qualcomm, Renesas is spending huge effort to maintain in-house scanners. But, uh, I'm asking them to collect all patch into this one place to reduce, because uh, most of the company are doing a similar thing in a slightly different way. So this is kind of overlapping. So the LTSA can the idea to reduce each company's effort. So please introduce LT to use LTSA. And if they have the uh, same question, so please forward it to me. I will help that. OK, so uh, thank you for answering the question in the presentation here. Thank you very much. Uh, 我们大家给他再一个掌声鼓励，谢谢他今天来到这边。